So we want to figure out what 1 fourth plus 3 fifths minus 3 tenths is. And I encourage you to pause the video and see if you could figure this out on your own. All right, I'm assuming you've had an attempt. Let's work through this together now. So the first thing that might jump out at you is, look, I have these fractions that I'm adding and subtracting, but they all have different denominators. So in order to add and subtract them in a reasonable way, we'd all we'd want them, we want to rewrite them so they all have the same denominator. So what we really want to do is find a common multiple of 4, 5, and 10. And like I always say, I, we could use any common multiple, but it simplifies things a little bit if we use the smallest common multiple or the least common multiple. And one way to find the least common multiple is take the largest of these numbers and look at their multiples and keep increasing the multiples until you find one that's divisible by the other two. So for example, I could start at 10. 10 is divisible by 5, but it's not divisible by 4. So then we can go to 20. 20 is divisible by both 5 and 4. So the least common multiple of 4, 5, and 10 is 20. So let's rewrite all of these fractions as something over 20. So let's start with 1 fourth. 1 fourth is what over 20? Well, to go from 4 to 20, you have to multiply by 5. So you have to do that, you have to do the same thing to the numerator. You have to multiply it by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 over 4 is the same thing as 5 over 20. 4 is 4 times 1. 20 is 4 times 5. Then we want to think about, well, what happens to 3 fifths if I write it as something over 20? Well, to go in the denominator from 5 to 20, you have to multiply by 4. So you have to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. So 3 times 4 is going to be equal to 12. And then we're going to subtract 3 tenths. But how do we write that as something over 20? Well, to go from 10 to 20, you multiply the denominator by 2. So if we want to have the same fraction, we need to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. So 3 times 2 is 6. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, now I have 5 twentieths plus 12 twentieths minus 6 twentieths. So what is this going to be? Well, there's a bunch of ways you could think about it. You could say, well, this is just going to be, this is going to be 5, 5 twentieths plus 12 twentieths plus 12 twentieths minus 6 twentieths. Minus 6 twentieths, or another way of thinking about it, the way I just wrote it here, 5 plus 12 minus 6, all of that over 20. This is how, this, this is how many twentieths are going to result. So what is that equal to? Well, that's going to be equal to all of this. We are counting twentieths is one way to think about it. So 5 plus 12 is 17 minus 6 is 11. So we get 11, 12, 11 twentieths. If I have 5 twentieths, I add 12 twentieths, and I take away 6 twentieths, I'm going to be left with 11 twentieths. Let's do one more example of this, just for, for good practice. So here I have 4 ninths minus 1 sixth plus 1 third. And like before, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you could work this out. Well, what I want to do is I want to rewrite all of these fractions so that they have a, they have a common denominator. And to find a common denominator, I need to find a, a, a common multiple of 9, 6, and 3. And like I did before, what I could do is I could start with a 9 and say, okay, 9, it's not divisible by 6. It is divisible by 3, but that's not good enough. I want to find a common multiple of 9, 6, and 3, and a, as small as 1 as possible. So let's look at the next multiple of 9. We get to 18. And 18 is divisible by 9, of course, 6, and 3. So let's go with 18. Let's write everything as something over 18. So 4 ninths is what over 18? Well, 9 times 2 is 18. That's what I did to the denominator. So I have to multiply the numerator by 2 as well. So this is going to be 8 over 18. Well, what's 1 sixth over 18? Well, to go from 6 to 18 in the denominator, I have to multiply by 3. So I have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So 1 times 3 is 3. And then last but not least, what is 1 third is something over 18? Well, 3 times 6 is 18, so 1 times 6 is going to be 6. Or you could view it another way. You could say, well, what's 1 third of 18? It's going to be 6. What's 1 sixth of 18? It's going to be 3. 4 ninths of 18, that's a little bit harder to think in your brain, but that's going to be 8 eighteenths. Either way, I've just rewritten these fractions, and, and I've rewritten them in the corresponding color. 
So this, this up here is the exact same thing as 8 eighteenths minus 3 eighteenths plus 6 eighteenths. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be a certain number of eighteenths. And so if I have 8 eighteenths minus 3 eighteenths, that's going to be 5 eighteenths, plus 6 eighteenths is going to be 11, 11 eighteenths. And we are done.